Hey guys, welcome back to Just Peeling Barbecue. Today we're going to fire up the Watchman stove for some carnitas. Stay tuned. Okay, today we're going to be doing carnitas on the Watchman stove using a uh, cast iron Dutch oven. And these carnitas, I've never done them myself before. I've wanted to do them for a long time. And so we're going to see how they turn out. I hope they There's turn a lot out of good. different regions in Mexico and a lot of regions do them different ways. I'm going to do them uh, as authentic as I can with a just piddling twist to it. Right here I've got about five and a half to six pounds of pork. Now you can get a Boston butt, take the bone out and chop it up or get a, or get a boneless Boston butt and just chop it up. Uh, what I did is I had some country style ribs and I had a, uh, a half of a whole pork loin that I had left over. And so I chopped that up as well, keeping as much fat as I could on it. I've got a chopped up onion that I've cut into eighths. Um, I've got four bay leaves. I've got one stick of cinnamon, pretty good sized stick of cinnamon. Four cloves of garlic and one uh, cut up jalapeno that I have seeded. And I'm just going to throw that in there. We've got one orange. We've got a can of sweetened condensed milk. Some people use evaporated milk. Some people leave it out. If you don't want to use it, you can leave it out. But from what I understand, it adds a nice caramelization to the meat. I also have a Mexican Coca-Cola. Um, from what I understand, a regular Coca-Cola is not the same. So try to get a Mexican Coca-Cola because the ingredients that they make it with is different. And lastly, we're cooking with lard. Don't substitute anything else for it. Uh, use lard. There's nothing wrong with cooking with lard. My mom was probably smiling because that's all she ever cooked with was lard. So that's what we're gonna be cooking with. Now I've gotta get out there, get a fire starter so we can get this thing going. Now I'm out here to watch my stove getting the uh, chimney fired up. And I'm gonna talk about what I'm gonna use for my fuel source today. I'm out of stick wood and the guy that uh, I usually get my stick wood from is missing in action. I haven't been able to get in contact with him. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a pretty full uh, chimney of charcoal. You can see it over there. And I'm going to dump that all the way in the bottom. I'm not going to use my uh, charcoal insert. I'm just going to dump it all the way to the bottom. And that's going to start my heat source, but then I'm going to supplement that with some off cuts that I've got from my wood shop uh, and you can see them some of them laying over there but I've got a whole bin full of them and uh, so I'm going to use those it's really not going to matter because I'm cooking in a cast iron pot so no kind of uh, flavors from any of the wood that I use is really going to get on the food so uh, that's going to be my heat source I'm going to use charcoal and then I'm gonna supplement that with some offcuts from my wood shop. All right, right now I've got my coals in the stove. I dropped them all the way to the bottom. And you can see down in there, nice and hot. And I've got my Dutch oven on top and I've already put some lard in there and letting it get Once melted. Once it gets down. melted, we're gonna start the process of some nice carnitas. All right, we've got our lard, it's melted down, and now I've got it up to 350 degrees. I'll fix and start putting the meat in. Now, one word of caution, you gotta be careful because this lard is lava hot. And so when you're putting it in, please be careful when you're putting this stuff in this grease. Now, I've got so much meat that I'm probably gonna do two batches. So let's start putting it in. And that's what you want to hear. We want to get a nice brown color on all this meat, get a nice crust on it. So the outside is going to be nice and crunchy, but the inside is nice, moist, and tender.
Now keep in mind when you put your meat in, it's gonna calm the temperature of that grease down a little bit. So you wanna make sure that it's at least 350. 375 might be even better. That's probably about half, so we're gonna let that go. And I'm gonna give it a good stir to make sure nothing's sticking on the bottom. And then I'll bring you back when this batch is done. All right, guys, we've had this going about almost exactly an hour. We did the first batch for 30 minutes, took them out, did the second batch for 30 minutes, and then I put the first batch back in. Now, I haven't got quite the color that I want on it, but I'm gonna fix that at the end. I put everything back in the lard, and now it's going up. It's, it's kind of a, a nice medium simmer. And now we're gonna start adding our flavoring ingredients. Now, the first thing I'm gonna add, some people add water. Uh, the local Mexican restaurant up here, they add beer to theirs. And I'm sure it's a Mexican beer like a Dos Equis or a Corona, a Tecate. Uh, but I've got a Bud Light Lime. I think it'll go well with the uh, ingredients that we have. So we're going to add that now. Now I know what you're thinking. Adding water to hot grease, it's going to boil over and all that stuff. But it's really not because we've got the meat in there. So there's nothing to worry about with that. We're gonna go in with a 12 ounce bottle of Bud Light Lime. Use your favorite beer. Now this is definitely going to cool down the oil, but that's kind of what you want because you want a low simmer. And now we're gonna add one juice of one orange to the pot. Now we're going to add the juice of one orange, making sure that you catch the seeds. Doesn't look like there was any seeds in this side. And we're just going to throw that whole half of an orange in there with the peel and all. Now I know this one does have a seed. I'm going to go ahead and get that out of there. Squeeze this other half in. Now we're gonna to toss that one in as well. All right, right after we put the oranges in, we're gonna go in with a whole onion that's been cut into eighths. We're gonna do a uh, chopped jalapeno in pieces about that big, four cloves of garlic, one cinnamon stick, and four bay leaves. And all that's going in. All right, next we're gonna put in our Mexican Coca-Cola. And this is gonna add a real good sweetness to it. And then now we're just gonna let that come back up to a slow simmer. And by the way, I did have a wardrobe change. I just checked the weather and with the heat index, it feels like 98 out here. It's scorching hot, so in between, I've been taking dips in the pool with my uh, camera lady here. It's been exactly 30 minutes since we put all the other ingredients in. So now I'm going in with some uh, sweetened condensed milk. I know it sounds a little weird, but uh, that's what a lot of uh, traditional people put in the uh, carnitas. So that's what we're going to do. Now we're going in with about a half a can. And we're just going to spread it around nice and even and let it get incorporated. Now before anybody asks, after about five minutes of putting that condensed milk in, it's gonna look like this. And it's not very attractive, but that's exactly how it's supposed to look, so don't panic. It's gonna be all right. That's just the way it looks after it first goes in. So just give it a stir, work everything in. It smells amazing.
half hour since we added the uh, condensed milk. But what we haven't done is seasoned a whole lot, but that's because we're letting that lard and the bay leaf and all the other things that we've added season a little bit, but now it's time to add some salt. And I'm gonna add a pretty good bit of salt just because there's a lot of meat in there. You're talking about, you know, probably five and a half, six pounds of meat. So we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of salt and then just let that go. All right, now if you wanna know when your carnitas are ready to come out of the pot, I'm fixing to show you how. All right, get you a piece up by the side and if that fork sinks in just like that and falls off just like that, your carnitas are ready to come out. So now we're gonna get these carnitas out of the pot into this pan and then we're gonna regroup to get some color on it. All right, now I've already done one batch uh, getting it browned up, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to get yours browned up after you've already had it in I've the pot. I've got a cast iron skillet right here and uh, I've got about, I put about a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons of lard in here and just let it uh, get nice and, and dissolve. And now we're just going to put our pieces of meat in there. And that's exactly what you want to hear. Make sure every piece of meat is in contact with the bottom of the skillet. And then you want to get a nice crust on the outside so that the outside has a nice crust, but it's moist and tender on the inside. Now we're just gonna let those go until they get brown. All right, now I'm gonna show you what you're looking for when you start getting color on these things. This is exactly what you're looking for when you're getting color. A nice crust on the outside, and then a nice and tender on the inside. All right, this is the last batch that we're fixing to take off. And uh, just a side note, I thought a good way to warm up your tortillas is just put them in tin foil like you get at a Mexican restaurant and put them on the uh, potato plate down here. So I've got three tortillas wrapped up in tin foil, warming up right here on the uh, potato plate. And they're about ready to uh, take off. So is this meat. Now we're fixing to make us a carnita taco. Guys, let's get these carnitas going. I've got my hot tortillas that are warmed up on the potato plate on the watch my stove. Let's get these taken out. A little warm. Perfect. Roll these back up so they stay warm. A few of these in here. And if you're wondering if they're tender, you can just mash them and they just fall to pieces. And that's what you're looking for. That's gonna be good. Now, I've made some homemade salsa that I'm gonna put right on top, just a little bit because I want the flavors of the meat to come through. That should be good. A little bit of sour cream. You could also use some uh, Mexican crema. The store didn't have any, so we're just gonna use some sour cream. A little cheese on top. And a little squeeze of some lime juice. Right over the top. Nothing left to do but give it a try. Let's see how we did. I've been waiting on this all day. Again, let's get some of that meat down there at the end down there. Cheers. That was worth the wait. You gotta try this. It's a mixture.
similar to pulled pork, but a little sweeter from the cola and the uh, condensed milk. A little bit of the orange, but cooking all day in that lard really breaks everything down, and gets it tender, and then searing it right there at the end and getting that crust on it. I mean, this is hard to beat. If you got to watch on the stove, give this a try. You can't beat it. If not, whatever grill you've got, you got to try this recipe. Until next time, I'll be peddling. So once it does that, we're going to start the process of some nice connect cart. Actually, that's probably three quarters of a can, but that's just going to make it even better. Nice and sweet. That's pretty good.